If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No, for something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. If there is just one life to live, then we're gonna be sure to live it. After building our Land Cruiser Chinook in 100 days on Vancouver Island, we field tested it over the next three months through America. Then we set off to drive the Pan America Highway. As the adventure unfolded week after week, we averted disasters, discovered places of extraordinary beauty, met and made new friends, conquered fears, and realized some of our deepest hopes. We are currently at the southern border of Mexico. Join us as we head for the southernmost tip of South America. We're Toyota World Runners, and this is our adventure of a lifetime. The incredible contrast between temperatures, flora, and fauna that Mexico's elevation reveals will make you never feel prepared. Whether you're coming down a mountain into the Hulk Green sauna, playing hide and seek with perfect surf breaks, or slowly rolling the windows back up when you see a pine tree, Mexico touches your skin with different hands around every exaggerated bend. Leaving the cool side of the pillow we found in San Cristobal is daunting. We're not sure we're ready for clothes to stick to our bodies again, or the transfer of cold water bottles into the fridge game. We like cooking inside without repercussions, and we're sure loving sleeping beside each other underneath the duvet. However, what the heat offers with its beauty, we simply cannot seem to stay away from. Today we are on the hunt for another incredible gift of nature, El Chiflon, because truly the only way to survive temperatures and humidity like this is to reside by a water source. It's hot! That's just from my seatbelt. The Chinook gets to take a breath after a windy and hot few hours of driving, and we are greeted with cold water. That is refreshing, because the air sure isn't. Cheers to you guys. Tomorrow we get to see, I don't know, the, the greatest waterfall in all of Mexico. It's a great, it's a, I can't remember if it's the biggest or the greatest, but... It's pretty epic. Just you wait. If you thought the ones from the Huasteca were epic, mm -hmm. we're all in for a treat. The, water tour, the waterfall tour continues. It's never ending, actually. After our ceremonious cerveza in our private river, we fall asleep to its perfect white noise. El Chiflon is only a few kilometers upstream, and we can feel its call by morning. As 
the tree canopy closes in, we're quickly surrounded by animated styles of leaves and flowers that belong on a Hawaiian shirt. We follow the river on our left and can't stop talking about its color. It's early in the morning, so the songbirds are still at their chorus. As we continue our jungle tour, the waterfalls become more powerful. El Chiflon is a series of five waterfalls, with the pinnacle being what translates to Bridal Veil Falls. Its spectacular veil of water crashes into a perfect turquoise bath that continues to the other falls that we just witnessed. A ladder and platform allows you to get close enough to shower in the mist. And once again, nature has created perfection. We smile and look at each other with agreement. Mexico has done it again. We've gifted you another epic waterfall. I don't even know how to rate them anymore. No. It's like these are the most stunning waterfalls I've ever seen. Yeah. And we're almost numb to it. Yeah, that's what we were saying. It's like it's like hard to be surprised. Like, oh look, another stunning waterfall Whoa. in Mexico. <laughs> Mexico does it once again. After bathing in the Gatorade tub, and when the tourists start arriving, our shoes are on and we're on the road to the next watering hole. Literally. What are they doing? They're just like doing laps. You guys are probably wondering how we know when it's going to be a good day. The answer is right here. Right here in this little ball of magic. I don't know if I can do this without a hammer. But... Hand is hammer. This is, 
This is how you have a good day. This lake, or mature cenote, is a mesmerizing natural sinkhole. Formed by the collapse of limestone bedrock, it reveals a crystal clear pool of turquoise water. Cenotes were important for Mayan culture, and that's also where their name comes from. They were used as a main water source for most Mayan civilizations, and also considered the gateway to the underworld. If you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to pause it and smash that like button. And subscribe if you aren't already. It's free and it really does help us out more than you know. Cheers from You Need a Jab. You need a you need a jab. <laughs> you need a jab. <laughs> That's honestly what it sounds like. Good, good work. This is the funniest little town. We're gonna show you tomorrow morning. It's got uniqueness in a very unfamiliar way. Very much so. But and it's really cool. Yeah, our curiosity has been just flowing the whole time, but there's no one here. So you can't even like get a vibe check. There's... The, I'll give you one word for the vibe check. Liquid. I was going to say pools. Yeah, pools. Alright. Cheers. Oh, that was so odd. You don't need to tune into the weather channel to get the report around here. Yeah, I don't know what's in store for us with that guy. By simply looking at the sky, we could tell that we were in for some entertainment or something really scary. Yeah, we might just get a really good show. Chasing storms, you got stuff all over your lens, bro. The wind in your face. Do you see that? There's a fire. That just hit it. That literally just started. I'm. You see that, right? That's exactly where that just hit. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it on the lens. Oh my gosh. That fire's bright. Thankfully, with most tropical storms, comes a monsoon level of rain. Now knowing we wouldn't be chased by a rogue bushfire, we could plan an off-road route. So, we're calling tonight's cloud formation the Three Humps. I wonder what they'll bring. The 
river that runs through the town gets directed into these beautiful pools that are public from what it seems because there is nobody here. This is an awesome place to settle for a couple days, beat the heat, and catch up on some work. It's time for a game of count how many pools there are in Unina Jab. We lost count somewhere after 30. The place must get busy at some time of the year, but we're not sure when that is. It's certainly an awesome place to visit. This may or may not be a shortcut, but we are taking a off-road route that's gonna do some steep switchbacks to get us over those mountains and back onto the carretera, the highway. If you're wondering I'm not wearing a shirt, it's hot. Don't worry, it's only 7.30 a.m. on the map a series of switchbacks and I can tell Matthew is giddy to be off the tope roads. I am in charge of flying the drone and honestly can't believe what I am seeing. A road may seem windy when you're in the vehicle, but from above, it's a whole nother perspective. I can see the perfect hairpin corners that follow the cliffside and the snake that has been carved into the earth. Simply a road that shouldn't be there, but it is. Matthew and the Chinook work together in the ballet of an off-road route in Mexico, and I'm happy to have front road tickets to the show. past a sign hidden by moss and trees in the bushes, I decide that my intuition is strong enough that we need to turn around and check it out. We found a parking lot and purchased tickets to what we were not sure of. We discovered that the Tenem Puente Mayan ruins are truly worth better signage. This is not a wall. These are stairs. We let ourselves into this entirely foreign world in an attempt to understand. Well, this is a very rare sight. We 
we can't help but feel so far removed with our phones jumping out of our pockets and the Chinook waiting for us in the parking lot. Maintaining presence, we walk where soldiers walked, touch the land that has provided for so long and appreciate this treasure left for us to learn about. A little steep. The ruins here spread over nearly 10 acres, and it was a major trade hub up until 1200 AD. It has three ball courts and three distinct plazas spread out over many different levels. As the door opens back up to our current era and reality, we're one with the heat again. That's got the stuff. Thankfully, our elevation is gaining, and with our noses pointed towards watering holes, we're feeling good about checking out Lagunas de Montebello. doused in food coloring, the houses wrapped in rainbows, and the flowers of brilliant colors, Mexico sure knows how to add an extra layer of saturation to every color scheme. Yeah. The pine trees that line the road symbolize our elevation has gained, and this will be a comfortable place to lay our heads tonight. Mexico's deeply rich cultural history, stunning beauty, and wonderful people never cease to amaze us. Almost everywhere we've been, smiles strike our faces and gratitude fills our hearts. I don't mean to sound too poetic, this place is just incredible. Two things to do on our list today. One is check out more of the amazing lakes. Two, 
is go back 30 kilometers to the nearest town because these little villages have next to nothing for fresh food, which is A, kind of sad, and B, no, it's just kind of sad because it sucks for them and it sucks for us. So we got to go back to town, but it's okay because the landscape is stunning. Well, grocery shopping took five hours, <laughs> which is, it just happens in Mexico. But now we're going to explore the lake. This one definitely got the uh, turquoise food coloring, hey? Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, yep. Bonkers! Well, quickly realized why no one's here. It's beautiful, but there's nowhere to chill. Where am I supposed to get my chippies? On this dock. I don't know, man. I think we go to the next one. What? Well, I'm hungry. Okay, that one was a bust. Next lake. An elephant that lingers in our tiny home is that our steering fix from way back on the road to Denver has finally called it quits. If you've been with us since Arizona, this may be deja vu. We noticed a small mechanic shop not far from the lakes with two Toyotas parked out front, and we decide to head there. We roll up, and within minutes, the steering wheel is out, and Matthew and the mechanic are deliberating. It's decided that we need a new steering bearing. About 20 kilometers away, there's a shop that can get this done. But Matthew had to get there first. Oh, <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> guys at El Torno fabricated with a lathe a new plastic bearing for the end of the steering column and it was great it only cost 40 bucks and it was done right and now our steering will be legit which will be in <laughs> adios our adventure continues and so does our weekly series. By now, I trust that we've earned your subscription. If this is your first time joining us, be sure to check out the rest of our Mexico series. If you'd like to support us further, you can join us on Patreon for behind the scenes content or pick up some TWR swag from our store. As always, thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.